What's up everyone? Uh, it's December, so we do have a new Pixel update that was just released yesterday. Will we have the 80% battery limit that I was looking forward to last month? We'll find out. I'll do the update and uh, take a look, see what are the changes and uh, go over all that as well. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Colin. Let's get into it. So the first update I want to show you is the new Gemini update, which is now tied more closely with Google Assistant, um, or even if it uses Google Assistant now. Uh, before Gemini, a lot of features um, in terms of controlling your phone, you can't really do. So things like asking Gemini to call someone or text someone. Um, so here are some of the examples uh, I could show you that works with Gemini. Call home. Calling home. Text to Takuya. What's the message? Hey, how's it going? Sure, message to Takuya Izawa saying, Hey, how's it going? Ready to send it? Set a timer for five minutes. All right, I created a timer that will go off in five minutes. Increase the volume to 80%. Volume set to 80%. Decrease volume to 30%. Take a selfie for five seconds. Taking a selfie in five seconds. So as you can see, these are features that you could use with Gemini. It's more tied into uh, with the Google Assistant uh, as well. So uh, this is a really great uh, update. And let's get on to the next one. All right, so with the update as well, uh, Gemini has a better integration with Google Maps. Here are some examples that I could uh, show you. What are the best Chinese restaurants in Victoria, BC? Here are some of the best Chinese restaurants in Victoria, BC, according to various sources and reviews. Traditional Chinese cuisine, Little Yunnan Restaurant. This restaurant specializes in traditional Yunnan cuisine offering unique and flavorful dishes. It's highly rated for its authentic flavors and friendly. So that shows a selection of Chinese restaurants that are good. Um, but let's look at more of a specific restaurant. How are the food at Pokey Lounge in Victoria, BC? The Poke Lounge in Victoria is a popular spot for poke bowls. Here's what people are saying about their food. Fresh quality ingredients. Many people praise the freshness and quality of the seafood and other toppings used in the poke bowls. Generous portions. The bowls are said to be quite filling, making them a good... How about the reviews of Panda Island in Victoria, BC? Panda Island in Victoria, BC has received generally positive reviews. Many people praise the restaurant's delicious food, especially the eggplant dishes and dim sum. The restaurant is also known for its friendly. How are the food at Don Mi restaurant in Victoria, BC? Here's what I found about the food at Don Mei restaurant in Victoria, BC. Classic Chinese cuisine. Don Mei offers a traditional Cantonese menu with a wide variety of dishes, including dim sum, sweet and sour dishes, chop suey, and more. Dim sum. So as you can see, it does pretty well of summarizing uh, the restaurants that I was able to ask. Um, so that's kind of neat. Um, so if you, this just makes it more advanced with uh, Gemini and uh, you can play around with it. 
So moving away from Gemini, uh, this update also has a fun feature with the smileys and stickers. So if I open up a text message, uh, on the bottom, I'm just gonna press and hold the um, button next to the numbers, which goes to the smiley face. So you'll see all these uh, emotions and smileys. And if I tap on one of them, it's gonna show me different variations of, uh, or more stickers of the uh, smiley. So, this is for the regular smiley. Here's the one with the sunglasses smiley. And uh, Christmas tree, again, different variations of the Christmas tree. Uh, let's look at the fire one. So, yeah, as you can see, different variations of those, of that particular smiley. Let's check out this one. <laughs> yeah, this shows different, look at that turtle. That looks awesome. So yeah, this is another update and I, I hopefully you could have fun with this. All right, so there's another uh, feature along with this update called Simple View. So what this does is it basically uh, has a set of uh, templates on the size of your text, um, the icons, the, uh, the contrast and colors, and the navigation button. So basically, uh, it will increase everything so it's easier for if you have someone that, um, uh, like an elderly that uh, needs better vision, uh, this is a way to increase that. Um, so if you tap on that, it makes the size, um, the text bigger. It also converts the navigation gestures to the old, old button layout so it's easier. As you can see, all the icons are much bigger. Um, so it's a uh, it kind of reminds me of Samsung's, um, uh, I forgot what the name was. It was something similar. It just makes it easier for um, for seniors, for example, to use their phone so it's less complicated. This is more or less the, of that. That's just, this is more of the, uh, like the text and the font, uh, whereas the Samsung one actually reduces to the major, um, most popular, um, features like call text uh, and the camera for example but this just this just changes the text the font and the icon size and everything so this just makes it easier instead of going through each uh, setting to increase the size increase the icon a uh, simple view just makes it easier to do it all at once with just a button so i'm just gonna and you always go back to the previous uh preferences by disabling it so that's another feature um, as part of the update. A lot of uh, user interface enhancements through the Android system. So let me go over some of that. So for example, when you launch an app and you want to go back home, you'll see a little mini animation that will kind of like fade back in type of thing. So, um, so, so that's the new animation that's on there. Uh, you'll notice uh, if I launch the one of these apps you'll see that the taskbar on the top is a bit thicker now that's to align the camera uh cutout hole to be centered so it is going to be a little bit thicker than what it used to be uh, so that will probably affect some of the apps uh, like your home screen might uh, the icons might be adjusted based on the taskbar at the top so that's another change uh, you'll see if you go to the settings you'll see Google has updated the list to um, to be grouped into certain categories. So um, you got the Google top right there. Google's just basically Google. You got your connect connections, so network and the connect device. And anything based on apps uh, system-wise is on there. And you got the system storage, battery system stuff in one. Uh, you know, usually a belt phone is usually at the very bottom. So now it's grouped into this system right now. And then you got your security passwords and emergency stuff grouped into here. So um, I kind of like this layout. Um, makes it easier to to uh, to look for things. But of course, you still have the search settings on top. So, um, so another feature within the settings is device temperature. So you could actually check what the temperature of your phone now, one thing which is kind of uh, a little bit different 
uh, I usually check it using Aku battery. Um, so let me just launch that. So there is a bit of difference here. So in terms of the Aku battery app, it says it's 29 degrees. Whereas in the settings on the phone itself, it says it's 30.3. So there is a bit of a, a difference. Um, not sure why, but um, but yeah, it's there. You could check your device temperature. And the one final thing that I want to do talk about is, yes, we do have the 80% battery limit. So, you know, initially when you do the update, you actually won't see it. It took about maybe five to 10 minutes after the update, I was able to see it. Um, it is under the battery section right here. And you'll see under charging optimization, you have the original adaptive charging. That is when, again, it goes up to 80% uh, until like two hours before your alarm clock. So if your alarm clock was at 8 a.m., it'll start charging from 80 to 100 at maybe around 6 a.m. Okay, so, but if you do the limit to 80%, it will always stop at 80%. And one thing they did mention on the bottom here is that uh, to help extend battery lifespan, your phone will only charge to 80% battery. But the phone will occasionally charge up to 100% to recalibrate the estimated capacity. So it's um, this is good to know because um, you don't want to charge 80% every single time. You do want to charge 100% once in a while, whether once a week, that's what it's usually recommended. Uh, this will prolong your battery life. So now if you change your phones every two years, you might not need to worry about it. But if you like to keep your phones for longer periods of time, like five years, this is a good way to uh, to prolong your battery life. If you use your phone a lot, you know, 80% might not last you for the whole day, then you might want to turn this off. Just use the 100%. At the end of the day, you still have 40% left of your phone. Yeah, then charge 80%. It's better than nothing, right? It just saves you the uh, battery life. So those are the, some of the features I want to go over with this update. Thanks for watching my video. Hopefully you've learned some of the new features of this new December update. Let me know in the comment section which feature you like and uh, or do you enjoy this new update. I personally do enjoy this update, uh, especially the 80% battery limit feature. It's something that will help me prolong the battery life on my phone, although I'll probably change my phone anyways, but uh, I think it will help many uh, users as well so um yeah comment section below if you have any other questions hopefully you could like and subscribe to my channel and uh, i'll have some more content coming uh to you for uh, cell phones in general not just the pixel um so stay tuned with that yeah thanks for watching have a great one